Welcome back. If this is your first week with us, welcome for joining. Um, I want to build a cyberpunk futuristic battle board, so I'm going to need some Necromunda style tiles. This video is all about getting started with that, so see you after this. Okay, before we get started, just a really quick interlude. This is a different type of video to how I would normally do it. Um, it's long form. So it's very much unedited, kind of uh, kind of talk my way through it, recording the audio as I go. Um, I'll be interested if you could put in comments, do you like this kind of format? Is it too long? Is it too boring? Do you prefer it? Any kind of feedback you have on it, because it is a little bit different. Um, and we'll see what you think. Thanks very much. So that'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, but I'm going to make each tile two inches by two inches. Now, I considered in an ideal world, I'd make them four inches, but I think that'll probably be a bit too big. Um, I can't, one inch I think will be too small, and three inch, the boards that I make are. 20 inches by 20 inches square, the ones that I take in schools for fighting writing. And 20 is not divisible by three. And I didn't want to have um, loads of tiles and then have to cut some of them up at the edge if I wanted to. Now, I'll probably make channels and, and rivers and things all like kind of sewage rivers in there. And so it would probably work out, but I didn't want to, you know, kind of, I, I like the divisibility of two inch um, or four inch. Five inches would just be ridiculous, let's not get carried away. But what I'm hoping is that that'll be the rough size of, well, that will be the size of the tile. That should be big enough to give me some detail on there. It should be big enough to allow me to put some kind of rivets and mesh and things like that. This one is, is just going to be a test to see how the detail casts in the silicon. Um, I've never used silicon to make silicon molds before. This is going to be a learning curve. I'm quite nervous. Um, I mean, the worst, it'll just go wrong. But um, yeah, it will be interesting to see how, how it works. Um, so I want a frame around the edge, and I don't know whether the easiest thing is to cut a square, again, the same size, and then cut out the middle, seems a bit of a waste of cardboard, or to try and make an outside thing. So I think I'm probably going to make one and mark it out, because I've got a bit of an idea I want some indents in the middle. So I think if I make it a centimetre, so I am British, I am going to use the metric system. Um, apologies to everybody else who uses inches, well, Americans who use inches. I'm sure you will follow along. Um, I have no idea. I mean, a centimetre is kind of just under a half an inch, maybe four sixths of an inch. Um, an inch is what, 25 mil? So half an inch would be 12 mil or 12.5 mil. So you do the math. Um, I'll cut that out. This rule is supposed to have a cushioned pad underneath it kind of helps it stick, doesn't always. So when cutting chipboard, use several passes I've found is much easier than trying to go through in one, you get a much cleaner cut. And chipboard is an interesting um, material. I wasn't sure whether to use, I kind of almost used um, two mil ply, which I've got, but that's harder to cut. And, um, I kind of want to see if cardboard works. My worry with it is what will happen when I put it in the silicon? Will the silicon seep into it? I am going to seal it. I've had advice from some people online. They kind of said seal it with um, PVA glue rather than Mod Podge. Apparently Mod Podge, I don't know, somehow reacts with, with silicon, um, which is my kind of go-to sealer normally. Um, but we will try it with PVA glue. Um, that's what the first test one is for, to just see how it works. Um, I was slightly worried about the texture of the cardboard, but I think, you know, it will probably be fine. It will work out looking like metal panels. 
one thing I really want to do with this, watching back my old videos, is I've kind of realised that I don't put a lot of fine detail onto things, and I kind of want to change that. I want to put some fine detail onto these things. So I've got lots of stuff to do that with. Um, and we'll see how it works out. It's kind of, I'm not the most artistic, I suppose, um, not, not the most naturally artistic. I can, you know, I, I can look at other people's ideas and think, oh, that's brilliant. I want to take that and, and use that for myself. But I'm not always so good at thinking, oh, I wonder, you know, oh, I could have this around the doorway or this around the window frame, things like that. See, I measured them. They don't look, they're definitely not parallel lines, but I think we'll be fine. So these are five centimeters. I want, you know, let's go for just a centimeter in the middle. That's fine. Two on either side. And there and there. And let's join. We'll put roughly 45 degrees again. This is the future. This is the, oh yeah, I'm going to level that line up. This is the, the despicable future. Nobody, everybody's at war. Everybody's fighting in this one. You know, I'm sure they've probably not got time to make sure all the angles on their metal panels are 45 degrees. It just adds character. I think I can hear some thunder in the background. I'm not sure if the microphones will pick that up. That will certainly be fun. It might break the temperature a little bit, give us a bit of fresh air. Um, be interesting to see how all you other hobbyists kind of cope with the temperatures, especially in the UK when it's been as warm or as warm for us <laughs> kind of thing as it has. I know some of you are kind of sitting there probably laughing at us not coping. We're just not got out. Like I say, we've, we've, there's no air conditioning really. Um, shops have it, but not really in houses, just kind of buy a load of fans from B&Q or whatever and that that. time's a charm with the camera holder. Let's see how we get on now. <sighs> so yes, we have lots of fans, no air conditioning. Our next door neighbours have just um, had air conditioning installed um, and it's kind of like the talk of the town. You know, I'm going to move this a little bit just because I'm slightly worried that it's going to get caught under my chin and you might not hear anything. If the sound quality has been awful up until now, hopefully that will be better. Um, I need super glue to stick it down because I want it to be a little bit quicker. Uh, hmm, now, do I stick it down yet? Because I want to put some mesh in the middle. Do I stick this down over it? Yeah, I think I can probably stick those bits down if I just could say. Hey. So this one just needs to cut it in half. So I'm kind of making this up as I go along, which is really how I like to, I like to hobby. I don't, you know, I'm not a big fan of loads and loads of planning. Um, I'm sure my projects would probably be slightly better if I did. Um, but then, you know, who's keeping score? Speaking of which, we're over 700 subscribers now, which is great. So I am kind of keeping score a little bit. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe, given that like button a, a hammer. You know the drill. Do it now. Makes me very happy when I log in and see, oh, we've got another few subscribers. Um, I do get an email from YouTube every time because I'm still, you know, still, still got relatively small numbers. Um, well, it's still far bigger than I ever expected when I started this. You know, I've got an author channel for the books that I write. And um, I don't think people really go on YouTube for authors. So that's got, you know, insignificant. It was like 30 or something like that. It's just not very many at all. Um, whereas this one's really shot up and just absolutely fantastic. Um, which is great. I'm really happy with that. Keep coming, keep recommending it to friends. Because um, it just kind of makes it worthwhile. If I do these videos and nobody watches, it's just always a little bit, eh, a bit disheartening. Um, now, I cannot find the scissors. My daughters are often stealing the scissors. Um, 
and then never return them. So I'm going to cut kind of and then trim it down because this roll is quite cumbersome to work with. This is just, um, I think it's called Modeler's Mesh, got it from eBay, it wasn't hugely expensive, but it's got a nice grid pattern, um, which I think, I mean, I'm really interested to see how that holds up when it comes to the um, silica moulds. I've got honestly got no idea how well these moulds will make that will capture the detail and even more so how much the casting resin will then um, match you know the detail that the, the silicon catches uh, I've never used either before I've obviously I've used um, epoxy resin but that has got a huge dry time really it normally takes you know at least 24 hours before you can demold it um, which doesn't really work for what I'm trying to do here. Um, okay, so I think that'll be cool. So if we put that one there, just put a little bit super glue. I'm trying to avoid any kind of overhangs because they will be, you know, catastrophic for the mold because they just will be encapsulated and you won't be able to demold anything afterwards um, using super glue just because it sets a lot quicker and probably a little bit too quickly really um, I always get on my fingers I've run out of activator as well I've ordered some more but it hasn't arrived yet um, should arrive later in the week which uh, to be fair I don't need activator on this um, okay so that's gonna fit in there nicely so I'm gonna put a thin layer of super so I don't want this to obscure too much of the detail but I also don't want the mesh to kind of be peeling up in the middle otherwise that will create cavities underneath it I'll create cavities underneath it which um, will then get snagged in the silicon and um, will just be an absolute pain to demold, uh, probably to the point that it will be impossible to demold them. This one, like I said, is just a test. If this one's a little bit bad, you know, not quite as neat as I'd like, it's not the end of the world. Um, I'd like to get a usable one out of this so that I can cast a few using this mold. Um, I'm also interested to see how long it holds up. You know, the idea with casting resin is that it's quick. It should set in about half an hour, I believe, for demolding. Um, at which point, hopefully, I'll be able to take it out, put a new lot in, and keep going. You can get through quite a bit. Because the bore is, like I said, 20 inch by 20 inch. Um, I know I said it was going to be metric, but for this, I've kind of broken my rule and gone imperial. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. So 20 by 20. If these are two, so I'll need 10 by 10. So I'll need 100 tiles um, to cover the entire board and that's if I'm just doing one layer I'd like to be able to do walls and things like that um, so I need to be able to cast a lot without it you know taking forever which it would do with epoxy resin the other option I considered was plaster of Paris um, but I'm not sure how strong that would be but it might be something once I've got the moulds it might be something that I experiment with um, just to say, oh man, that was a bad idea. That was predictable. Okay, so that's messed up the mesh a little bit. Yeah, it looks a bit damaged. I'm with that. 
So for decorations, I don't really know what to do. I think I'm going to try and put some score lines down here. So I'm going to use this tool. Despite my wife being a teacher and my oldest daughter being at high school, I cannot find a biro at all in the house. So I'm using this clay working tool, which is a bit scuffy. Not ideal. I just want to give it some index because, again, I'm intrigued to see whether the silicon will pick that up when it comes to casting or whether it will just get lost. <sighs> it's kind of getting lost in there because it's just so stuffy. I need to probably need to clean it. Might as well come off when I PVA it as well, I would imagine. Um, I just want a score line along here so it looks like a panel. There we go, that's a bit of a better job. There we go. Um, I bought these from the works. So these will make, hopefully, rivets. We'll see. Somewhere. I really hate tweezers. It's one of those things that just feels like they should be a lot easier to use than they actually are. Few of these around. This is what I mean by just adding that little bit of extra detail that I don't normally do. So I'm hoping this will make just a little bit of difference. I mean, they look pretty funky at the minute with these bright red gems, but obviously the cast ones will be steel or something like that. Um, I'm not going to put too much in the middle. I might for some of them put beams across and things like that when I get to making them. Um, but for these, I'm just going to put the kind of the rivets. I might put some pipes, uh, like wires in. In a minute, I've got some electrical components in this box that I might stick on, like resistors and things like that, just to see. And if you can see behind me, I've started um, behind here. I've started to put up some shelves with my 3D printed pile of shame or my wall of shame. I'm hoping that seeing that week after week in the videos might encourage me to actually get some of it painted. Um, that's the problem with having a 3D printer and a couple of Patreon subscriptions. Um, just print a load of stuff and then never use it, never paint it. Um, I don't even know what half of that'll be used for. I'm kind of figuring I might, you know, I, I want to do play some more D and D. Um, I've run one campaign as a DM, which is good. I played a couple of games, um, and I really like it. It's just finding the time, finding the people. Um, but I've got, you know, my cousins. He came around with his kids before, which was really good, and my daughter. So I think um, I'm a dad. So I think we'll do that again. Um, but it's just getting everybody together is always difficult. I don't know if other people struggle with that in the hobby. It's like kind of finding the time to actually play. Do a lot of building, a lot of painting. Um, but when do we actually play? I think that's kind of like why that's kind of why I run and like running the fighting writing workshops because they work as a as a way of saying um, you know hey look let's play some games and turn it into awesome writing. Um, which kind of gives me somewhere to go and play as well. Sounds really sad and lonely. It's not. It's just how it is. And I do get to play. Um, quite looking forward to having a go at 10th edition Warhammer 40 play, see what that's like. I don't know if anyone's played that yet. Oh, God, sweating. Right, so that's some rivets. I'm not going to go overboard. I think that looks pretty cool. 
Um, let's have a look at some. Actually, maybe if I put some of these in. So transistor. I'm thinking maybe and maybe bend these legs round. give let's have a think because I don't want to bend these around again if these bend around and there's gaps beneath them we're going to have problems when it comes to demolding the casts so I can probably do that bend these down Wear safety goggles, kids, when you're cutting these things off. I've got glasses on, so I kind of figure I'm safe. I'm probably not. I'm definitely not safe from stabbing myself in the finger. Um, so I don't want to put too much of this kind of stuff on as well because what will end up happening is it makes the tiles bumpy. So when you try and put figures down on them, that's a pain in the bum um, because they don't rest properly. But I think a few odd bits like that probably won't hurt. What else have we got in this box of tricks? I don't think there'll be huge amounts that we'll, I want to use too much of. Um, no, I think the resistor for now is probably enough. Um, uh, not a resistor, a transistor. I'm not going to use a resistor. Um, I, um, I don't know whether to have some of these as like bits of metal piping going across just to see how. Next. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Scottish, I don't know why. There we go. Apologies to all the Scottish listeners. That was a terrible Scottish accent, and I don't know where it came from. There we go. Alright, it's a bit more suitable. Because that's the other thing, I have no idea how super glue is going to react with the silicon when it comes to casting, um, whether that's going to react and kind of re what's it reactivate oh man see now the cardboard is sticking to me that was my worry with cardboard is the um the kind of the texture of it but we'll see use some tools now that's a better idea right we're back with some pva glue um i've also started using a different video app on my main camera um, well, it's my main phone because the built-in phone camera app just keeps stopping recording halfway through. I don't know why. The one up here is an old phone. It's like a Samsung S7, I think. Um, and that just seems to churn it out and record and record. So I might swap them around next time. Um, 
All we're doing here is getting some normal PVA glue um, and just slapping it on. Um, hopefully this will fill in like any really hidden underhangs but will keep the detail. I don't know whether I should have watered it down. Um, who knows? We shall see when it dries. Um, I don't really like PVA glue. This is why I much prefer Mod Podge. But the advice I was given online was that Mod Podge reacts sometimes with silicon. Don't know how true that is, I haven't tried. But I have no reason to doubt the person that gave me that information. And what's the point of asking for advice if you're not gonna listen to the advice you get? So, we'll see what this works like. Might be absolutely fine, might be awful. That's why we try practice ones and why we make mistakes so that we can learn from them. I suppose any bit bunched up bits will just work as rust. I did consider actually putting some sand on certain bits at this point to give it that rust texture, but I'd quite like that to be more random. So what I'll probably do is as I once I've cast them and stuck them down onto the board, then I can always go in and add textured paint for areas of rust and things like that. Um, I'll do the edges and what I'll do is I'll leave this to dry I'll give the bottom side a paint a coat and then um, we will come back for the grand pouring of the silicon which is the next big step which yeah not really sure how that's going to work um, could be great could be terrible could go completely wrong could be absolutely painless just don't know. I don't know what to expect. And also I didn't buy much silicon, so it might be that I do this one and it works absolutely fine. Um, but then I have to go and buy some more and that's a different brand and you know blah blah blah. It just doesn't look so. We shall see and we'll see what this dries like, see how claggy it dries, see whether it retains any of that texture. Um, at the minute it's looking a bit ridiculous. I'll put way too much PVA glue into my pot um, and try and get that back into the tub. Um, I keep saying erm a lot because I'm thinking as I go. This is why my narration is normally a bit cleaner because I can kind of edit it out. Right, I'm going to leave that there. We'll come back in about, well, it's really warm, so probably an hour, maybe two hours. See how it is, give it another cup, another coat on the back. Um, and then when you rejoin me, we'll be ready to do the silicon mould. So I'll see you for that in a minute. Right, I left the thing to dry overnight, so the PVA glue should be nice and dry by now. Um, the microphone, wireless microphone, the battery's just died literally as I've started filming, so we're going with the on-camera microphone today, see how that gets on. Um, and I know that this camera keeps rocking, and um, that's because it's attached here to the table and it's not a very sturdy table, so I do apologise, it's a bit wobbly. I'll try and find something better for next time and I'll try not to shake the table too much. Um, I'm going to use this box for casting in the silicon. I have no idea how this will work. Um, I'm going to try and put this in. I'm not going to fill it to the top, obviously. That would be a complete waste. Uh, I've done a little bit of a calculation for this and I think I'll need about 150 millilitres. I haven't got any big measuring cups. So it's complete amateur hour, these came with it. We're gonna do it in lots of 25 mils, um, about 75 mil of each. It is a one-to-one -one mix by volume rather than by weight. We'll see how that works. I have never used any casting silicon before, let alone this one. So no idea how it's going to um, work out. Could be great, could be terrible. It apparently has a six hour cure time. So you can demold it after six hours and then it says leave it for another four hours before you try and use it, which is great because the casting plaster hasn't arrived yet. Uh, casting plaster, the casting resin hasn't arrived yet anyway. Um, so we've got an A and B. This is just a, a generic brand I think it's called um, Start So World. So I don't know where that's, you know, whether it's a, a and hopefully that will stop it floating up and bubbling up and um, 
kind of just disturbing in the silicon. Right, so I'm just going to get a few bits ready and then we'll come back and do the pour. Right, okay, so I've put these screw caps, core little screw caps, onto the bottles that came with them. Um, I've stuck some double sided tape down into here and then there's a little bit of dirt there. Try and get that off. And then um, peeled off the backing just because that was a bit of a pain to do and I don't want to do that on camera. So you can see I've got two strips there and we use that to stick this down. And I'm hoping it's not the best double sided tape in the world, but I'm kind of hoping that will work to my favour that it won't stick. Yeah, that seems pretty, pretty solid. Um, let's see how that goes. Now I'm also going to stick, these are just um, plasterboard raw plugs, I'm going to stick these down because this is quite a deep box and I am slightly concerned that when it comes to taking the rubber silicon mould out, I'll have nothing to get hold of and it won't tap out because I'm not, I'm not using any release agent. It says I don't need to use release agent um, in the reviews online, so we shall see. But I'm hoping by having those I might be able to pull it out by the corners. Um, but we shall see. That, that might work, it might not. So they're all secure, they're not going anywhere. Um, so it is time to start pouring. So we need 75 mil of each. Um, so this cup has got 30 mil on it, so I'm going to do 30, 30, 10. Let's see how this comes out. It might be easy just to pour this without the nozzle on, to be fair. But this does allow an extra degree of So I'm not sure what the tolerances are on these. I know with epoxy resin, you've really got to be quite accurate, especially with these small volumes. It's not like I'm pouring loads and loads. Um, you really do need to be trying to be as accurate as possible. Um, apparently I've got 40 minutes life once I've started to mix it, so that's a bit of a relief. So I can't even see where the 30 mil is now on here. Oh, it's on that side, there we go. These have all been really well shaken um, off camera as well, so I've given them a really good mix in the bottles. Um, they're at room temperature. So I've followed all of the instructions that it says on the bottle. The only thing I could have done with is probably bigger measuring cups just to be a bit more accurate. Normally, like, normally with epoxy resin I'd do it by um, weight, because the, the epoxy resin I've got is a by weight one rather than by volume. Um, which is much easier because you can just put it on scales. Right, so now I need to do 10 mil. Now this table I know is level, so that is at least a bit of a bonus. I know it's only a cheap garden table for now, I am, go I am going to build a proper work table for it, there's loads of cool stuff in it, but for now we are using this one, but it is level, I do know that much. Right, so that is 70ml of that, I've got lots of paper towels ready just in case. So that was part A which is the silicon rubber. I don't know, it doesn't say which bit's which, that's part A. This is part B, so I'm gonna give 70 mil of this. Well, this is a lot easier. For this one, I 
have got, this is a well ventilator and I've got the door open as well, so I can't actually smell anything, it doesn't seem to be giving off any fumes. Um, I don't know whether it, will, whether it will start that when it starts to mix. We will find out. I've got a respirator behind me if I need it, if I feel like it's starting to get a little bit aromatic. Um, See now it does say by volume rather than by weight and yet the measurements given on the side of each jar is in ounces. Now not fluid ounces, which would be volume, but actual ounces, which is weight. And that just suggests that were I to mix them one to one by weight it probably wouldn't be a problem. But I figured with my first try, we want to do it by the book. It says, a little bit of residue in that one. It says to mix these for three minutes. So, I'm gonna give it a mix and I'll see you in three minutes. Okay, so that is about three minutes. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to commit, I'm going to commit to the pour. I'm going to try pouring it onto the lollipop sticks, it's what I do with resin, it doesn't say to do that, but it is quite a good way of trying to avoid too many bubbles. It does say on it that it doesn't need degassing, it says it, it forms bubble free. Um, we shall see. I'm slightly concerned that I won't you know, it might not come up high enough over that little transistor that we put in there, that would be interesting. Try and get as much of this out as possible. Now this is a big pot for that one square, there's a little bit of a waste, but I didn't have anything small, I haven't got any perspex on how to start making like a custom box at this point. Um, I've no idea actually if it will ruin this really useful top box, which is annoying because I quite like them. They are indeed really useful. I'm hoping, it's quite viscous, so I'm hoping that will just run down the walls and, and in. get as much as possible out so that it definitely comes up. I've opened the door a little bit wider so you can kind of hear the breeze outside now. I think I definitely need some better mixing stuff. think that is it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that with the lid off um, now for six hours. Well, it'll probably be a bit longer because it's now what time is it about? Tw quarter past six in the evening. I don't know if I can be bothered to stay up until just after midnight to try and take it out. We'll see. Um, I'll give it a bit of a tap. And I'm going
angle because then whenever I try and pour it, it will pour to an angle. So I need to try and get the top as, as level as possible. Um, so there are a few bubbles. It doesn't work the same as resin. Right, so I'm going to put it somewhere level and I will come back to you when we start to try and demold it. That could be fun. See you in a bit. One eternity later. Okay, we're going to try and demold this. It is way too early in the morning um, for you to be seeing me on camera, so we're going to do this just with the top down one. Um, it feels like it has definitely set. I have no idea if it's going to come out. Before I start tugging on that, I'm just going to try and slide a blade around the outside. It's actually been about 12 hours, it's about half past five in the morning here. Um, so just under 12 hours. Um, now I don't know if that will mean it's molded to the plastic or bonded to the plastic. I don't know if I should have come down, I just couldn't come down, I just didn't come down at midnight, couldn't be asked, couldn't be bothered. Um, Not sure how this will work. It's not the most convenient to get out. Oh, okay. Just trying to ease it rather than okay. Take the double sided tape off. It seems to have a little bit of a layer that snuck underneath. Or is that the PVA glue coming off? I'm not sure. I think it's a, th a very, very thin layer of silicon. That's it. Just gonna live with that. Right, I was thinking. I was when I was lying awake trying to get sleep last night. I was thinking, if I get up and this hasn't worked, do I just bin off the video? and leave it but then I thought no you know I'm all about showing mistakes I'm all about learning from processes um, so no matter what happens in a minute when I pull this out I'm going to upload the video um, if I take this card if I take the, the master out and it, it was working brilliantly then I'll wait for the casting resin to arrive um, we'll do moulds of it so on and so forth but what I think I will do is, no matter what happens, just try and get this little bit of double sided tape off. Is I think we'll call this part one, getting the master out, and then I will do a part two where we try and make a bigger mould and we cast it. Because I think the video is already running at about 40 minutes because of the way I've done it. And I don't want to sit there watching an hour or an hour and a half or something. So we'll do this too. Okay. Let's see if these will screw out. I'll push through. Yep, push through, that's even better. Okay, the moment of truth. seems to be pretty good. You can see all the detail on the mesh. The rivets seem to have worked. I'm really, really impressed with that. It's a really good quality silicon as well. <laughs> I am I am genuinely over the moon. Right. Okay. Let's do some casting. Okay, so we'll stop there. We've got the mould. 
I'm still waiting for the casting resin, the polyurethane resin to be delivered. This seems to be a good point to stop part one. What I'll do when the urethane, polyurethane resin arrives, I'll do a second video. I'll make the big mold with lots of different tiles. I'll use the time now while I wait for it to arrive to make loads of different tiles. They're all going to be based on this tile that we've just made. The same kind of, well, be the same size, same kind of shape. I'll put different bits in. I'll talk through those in the next video, but I probably won't go through a whole how to make all of them because they'll be very similar methods. We'll make a big mold, we'll get pouring, we'll get casting, see how it turns out, and we'll do a bit of painting as well and see how it starts to look on a board. Thanks for watching this one. Again, do leave in the comments whether you've liked this long form kind of video or whether you prefer the normal style where it's edited. Discord or, or Twitch or something like that. I'd like to know your thoughts, whether it's worth doing another one or whether, no, just go back to how it was before. So leave a comment, leave a like, click that subscribe button if you haven't, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.